Hello there and welcome to another episode of the Malik Show Live. I am your host Malik Shabazz Sullivan. I am so glad that you have decided to come on to another edition in this July season to see about us on tonight. Well, I hope you all are having an amazing time in this hot and humid month, but we are still passing through. But on tonight, we have an amazing special guest on tonight and tonight it's all about him. Um, but just brief before I introduce him, he is live and he is with us uh, right now. Uh, this is one of my good friends from the grand old Church of God in Christ. And might I say, it start from the Father, now it's down to the Son. But tonight we have an amazing special guest, an amazing interview, and much, much more. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time I give you New York's own Pastor John David Wright. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing out there? Yes, yes. Well, Dave, my friend and brother, I am so glad to have you on tonight. And while we have him on the live live, um, fans and viewers, just so you know, next week is uh, GNWA. And I know a lot of you all uh, are excited about that and making arrangements to come to the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., and uh, we got so much going on next week. But speaking of Pastor Wright, he's going to be here next week as well. And um, we would have did this with him in person. But hey, he's here and we got so much to talk with him on tonight. But just before we uh, start this live interview on tonight in the Church of God in Christ, we'd read the bio normally, as I always say, read it when you get home. But no, we're going to read everything on our special guest on tonight. But starting off on tonight pastor john david wright uh producer let's go to his picture on tonight oh yeah well it's a, a picture that we want to pull up producer uh to kick us on our interview live that's him yeah that's a good photo yes that is our picture of him on tonight pastor john david wright was born on july the 14th 1978 the third of five sons to bless the union of gospel legend, the late Reverend Timothy Wright and evangelist Betty Wright. In the early 1995, the 16-year-old young man began playing the organ with no classical training or conventional lessons, but instead purely by the anointing of God. After a three-day shut-in in prayer, he played, he prayed, and God informed. Since that experience, Pastor David Wright has become an accomplished musician, having worked with the late James Moore, gospel artist Kim Burrell, uh, legendary Betty Nelson, maestro Ricky Dillard, Professor James Hall, Dorothy Norwood, legendary, and many others. His gift has made room for him, allowing him to travel the world in his young adult years. After even play before an audience, including Pope John Paul II in 2000. By the early of 1997, David, as he is officially known, he played on his first live recording, Reverend Timothy Wright and the BJ Mass Choir, Been There, Done That. He'd been featured on more than a dozen gospel albums as both a musician and a producer the latter of which had led to six stellar nominations for the New York Fellowship Live in New York 2003, Let's Celebrate 2004, and the Grammy-nominated Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in 2007. Continuing his father's legacy, Pastor Wright stepped into the role of recording artist and began with his four brothers, Danny, Donnie, Derek, and Dwayne, formed the DW Project in December 2004. Though initially an instrument band where the brothers decided to add vocals to their authentic sound, the response was tremendous. The DW Project was self-titled CD in 2008, a youthful, soulful mix of contemporary gospel music with a clear foundation in their traditional sound for which the late Reverend Timothy Wright is known. Pastor David Wright served as a primary songwriter for the group. 
His songwriting style, the mix is a praise and worship with traditional gospel music, most known on songs as What a Mighty God We Serve, He Saved My Soul, He Was There, and Heaven has inspired, encouraged, shifted atmospheres, and stirred up worship, and every setting group has ministered. Pastor Wright has seen to fruition fruition, I said that word, a dream of his father's legacy, the Godfather Records. This Growing gospel music recording label was envisioned by the godfather of gospel, Reverend Timothy Wright, to be home for artists who would focus on the ministry of music and not its popularity, the anointing and not just the artistry. Godfather Records recently released Pastor David Wright and the New York Fellowship Mass Choir, The Next Generation, a double volume project that is... Sure to follow and possibly surplus the success of the preceded Reverend Timothy Wright set 20 years ago with Come Thou Almighty King. Pastor David Wright again brings together some of the best of the New York gospel artists with a choir of over 150 voices, anointed musicians and talents, writers, future gospel greats, Pastor John P. Key, Bishop Bruce Parham, Professor Butch Hayward, Crystal Rucker, Tiffany Andrews Woodside, Monique Walker, and many, many more. The first single from volume two of his release entitled Clap Your Hands has climbed to the top 20 of the Billboard gospel charts. There's been a buzz about this offering of the New York Fellowship Mass Choir, reminiscent of that first experience in 1993. Pastor David Wright revives and remakes old classic and proposes new classes for the next generation of gospel music listeners to enjoy. September the 20, I mean, excuse me, September the 15th, 2001, Pastor David Wright married former David, while we got you live, can you pronounce your wife's first name? Janita. Janita Daughtry of the Bayonton Beach, Florida. Hope I said that. And they Boys together the are floor. raising their children, Rocky, Jasmine, and Jay, to the walk in fear and admonition of the Lord. Pastor David Wright was ordained the pastor of the Grace Tabernacle Christian Center Church of Grand Old Church of God in Christ in Brooklyn, New York. And one, and I t- will say this live: once I get to Brooklyn, that'll be one of the churches I will be coming to. Um, it is. Here, where his late parents were both founders and co-pastor, Pastor David Wright now imparts his gifts in the in preachment, Bible teaching, and musical capacities as an anointed speaker. He instructs and uplifts the congregation, preaches the unadulterated word of God from every pulpit in which he stands and behind the cross of Christ and continues to teach choirs and music workshops around the country. His ministry is steadily growing to touch lives across this nation and around the world. Well, my friend and my brother, Pastor David Wright, we are going to go ahead and start this interview on tonight. And we got, and you know what, Dave, we got so much to talk about on tonight. But first question that I would like to ask you in this interview live on tonight is, we want to know who is the one and only David Wright? the New York one and only born and raised. Tell us a little bit about your childhood and where everything got started for you. Well, um, I, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. <clears throat> Back, um, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. And I'm one, I'm the middle son of five of Reverend Timothy Wright's son, Reverend Timothy Wright and Betty Wright. I'm the middle boy and uh, we grew up right there in uh, East New York, Brooklyn. And uh, God has been blessing us. He, he's been with us ever, ever since. We remember my father growing up. My father was one of the greatest gospel singers, gospel uh, recording artists, and even gospel music musicians. So we grew up around gospel music all of our lives, um, from James Cleveland to Kurt Carr to Mr. Clean, all of these were friends of my father, and even Kirk Franklin, and um, mm-hmm. we, we, Bishop Hezekiah Walker, mm-hmm. and just growing up in Brooklyn and going, I grew up Church of God in Christ, we grew up at Washington Temple Church of God in Christ in Brooklyn, New York, mm-hmm. and uh, I began to play the organ at the age, I actually started playing when I was five, 
and I mm-hmm. really started playing when I was 16. Uh, very, very strict family. My parents, you know, just like any other Kojic parents, you couldn't wear your church clothes outside. You had to change clothes, you know, all that stuff. And we just regular people from Brooklyn and loved the Lord and, and got saved at the age of 12. And and now here I am, Pastor David Wright, pastor in Grace Tabernacle Christian Center, Church of God in Christ. Awesome, 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 awesome. Well, you know what, David? Uh, while we're on the subject of family and so on and so forth, we want to pause right now. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, before there was a David Wright and there was, uh, I want to take this time in this first segment of the show to talk about one of the greatest gospel artists that ever walked the face of this earth. Producer, there's a picture of the one and only. We're going to go, we want to go to that picture. Yes, we're going to talk about that. Yes, let's pause right here. Um, as you all know, Pastor Bishop Timothy Wright, gospel legend, uh, one of the greatest gospel artists of all time. Now, David, might I say, I know this is not only the bishop, this is the pastor, but this is also your father. Um, now, we want at this time to talk a little bit about Pastor Bishop, the late Timothy Wright. Now, we want to talk uh, in this next question. Let's just talk about just you and your father. Let's talk about, uh, the, you know, as far as the church setting and, um, you know, how did you enjoy seeing your father minister? And he was a great musician. I know that for a fact, a great musician, a great singer, a great composer. Let's at this time talk a little bit about your father, the one and only, the late Bishop Timothy Wright. Yes, my, my dad, the late Reverend Timothy Wright, he, he was somebody special. And if you ever got to know him, you, you can say that he was a humble man. He, uh, even though he was known across the world, he was still touchable. You can still go up to him, shake his hand. Some folks, once they get one hit CD out, you can't touch him, talk to him, nothing. That was never my father. And my father, he, he, was, he started doing gospel music way back in the 60s. And he lasted for over 40 years in gospel music and i myself was his minister of music i started playing for my dad when i was 18 years old and i became his minister of music and i would travel it with him all of my brothers play donnie plays drums Derek plays drums Dwayne plays bass my other my oldest brother danny he plays the radio but and i and then i play the organ so when my father would do revivals Wherever he would went, wherever he would go, they would have to get two tickets. They had to get one for him and one for me. I was not just his organist, but I was his right hand man, his adjutant, and all of that stuff for many years until his until his demise. So everywhere my dad went, I went with him, and never did I know that he was grooming me and uh, molding me and showing me and teaching me to be what I am today as a pastor. I never wanted to be a pastor, never thought about it, but uh, I, I really didn't want it because I saw what my father had to go through as a pastor. So I, I didn't want that, but it, it, it came, it just came anyway. God, when God calls you for something, you've got to walk in the calling. But my father was an awesome man. He, he's written over 850 gospel songs. You, you're and, so uh, right about that. Yeah. Yeah, and he and he he's written songs. He tra- we traveled all over the world, and not just the gospel artist, the musician, the preacher, but he was an amazing dad. We had our family vacations. He'll get in the swimming pool and all that stuff like that. So he was he knew how to balance family and church, and I thank God for that. Well, I, I you know, and like I say, I've been a, a a right fan for many many years as I can remember, but. Uh, sadly to say, um, I have attended AIM 2008, which was in Detroit, Michigan. And, um, I believe Bishop was doing some stuff. Um, you know, I, I remember that thing. I was in my early teens, uh, 15, 16, 17 years old. I'm 28 now, so I can count how many years that ago was. But, David, I want to talk about that unforgettable con- convention. I'm sure you was there. 
But um, as you know, right after AIM was over with, uh, Bishop, your mother, and I uh, believe another uh, relative were driving back from Detroit back to New York, if I'm not mistaken, and they were into a, a horrible accident. And, uh, you know, God had called them home and stuff. Let's talk about your uh, moments and everything when that took place. Well, that was July the 4th, 2008. And yet we were all, <clears throat> excuse me, we were all in uh, Detroit, Michigan for the AIM convention. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was, I was, I was well. Speak up just a little bit, David. Producer, it again, sir. I can hear you now. Okay, yes. Um, and we were there at the AIM convention. And um, we were there all week. And I was there with my group and my, my family. And, and my dad was there. Mom was there. And, you know, most, most of our family were there. So we drove. We, we left out, I believe it was on Saturday. I, we, we both left out. I left out about... 10 hours before my dad left because I had some singers that had to get back. Mm -hmm. And then my dad left. He was down there selling his book, Who's Really on the Lord's Side. Mm -hmm. And he left and got on the road. Him and my mom got on the road. And my nephew, which is their grandson, mm -hmm. DJ is his name. And we left and got on the road and headed back. They left and got on the road heading back to New York. And they stopped off to get something to eat. Then they got back on the road. And on their way on Interstate 80, there was a man that was drunk riding up the wrong way, a drunk driver riding the wrong way on the interstate. And my father was doing about 75 miles per hour, and this young man was doing about 80 miles per hour, mm -hmm. and they hit head on. And when they hit head on, my mom, she died instantly. My nephew died the next day. And my father lived for another 10 months in a paralyzed state. So that that really, we, we, you know, we took a blow. That's It's enough to lose one parent, then to lose two, and then a nephew. So we, the family took a big blow, and it was, it was rough for us. But what helped us through that was my father was still holding on, and then my father's holding on he he was still in his right mind he couldn't move he was paralyzed from his shoulders down but him still being in his right mind he was able to pull us through that thing he planned my mother's funeral completely told us what she would wear told us where the clothes was in the house and and told us who was going to preach it so he, he he was not able to make the funeral but he did plan the funeral and then he at his demise of maybe nine to ten months later I was installed pastor. But the only way we got through that was because God was with us. Had God not been with us, we would have lost our mind. Mm. And, you know, I try to tell people, be careful of the being jealous of folks because you don't know the anointing that me and my brothers have now. You have no idea the struggle we had to go through to get where we are now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are not not built to take that kind of stuff you know I didn't, I didn't go and smoke weed or go and get drunk i said the only thing that can help me is god and if you don't have, if you have a relationship with god he can bring you through anything he can he can pull you out of anything and that's how we got through that with our, with our relationship with god and i don't know how people can deal with anything that tragic without having jesus in their life so that's what I want to leave with anybody that, you know, we had a lot of people praying for us all, all over the country, all over the world. This was not just Brooklyn news, but this, this was worldwide news when my parents were in that accident. So we had CNN contacted everybody. And and this, the one standard that we kept pushing is God is going to get us through this. And he did just that. I heard that. I heard that. I heard that. Well... Uh, uh, fans and viewers, like I say, uh, Reverend Timothy Wright, his legacy will live on, and God bless. And you know what? Speaking of Reverend Timothy Wright, there are, uh, well, you know what? We'll play that on part two. 
We're going to continue on, but we'll get back to more Reverend Timothy Wright in action. We have some video clips that we want to uh, also put on part two that we'll let you see. But I'm um, going back, uh, producer. We have um, some great pictures, beautiful pictures of uh, Bishop and his lovely wife. Yeah, that's David uh, as clean. Yes, that's Lady Betty and the late Bishop Timothy Wright, such a beautiful couple, and uh, they're going on. Yes, Lady Betty is dressed all the way up. That's Kojic right there. Well, you know what? They, they, they listen, Kojic, and um, <laughs> she was clean now. I seen some of them pictures of, um, and mother was dressed. Yes, Absolutely. Indeed. But moving on, we're moving on to another segment in this first uh, part of the Malik show. Um, we talked about the parents, so now we're moving a little further, producer. We're moving on to some another segment. That's David preaching. Well, like I said, we're going to talk about that in part two. But we, it's, it's a, it's, we want to talk about marriage. So, producer, I'm sure there's a beautiful young lady on. Yes, let's pause right there. Now, David, we want to talk at this time. We talked about your childhood. We talked about uh, your parents and a and little bit with Bishop. Now we're moving on to another segment of your life that we want you to share. Now, let's talk about you and this lovely lady that you have married on September the 15th, 2001. So let's talk a little bit about you and Lady G, Jean, J Janitha, did I say that right? Lady G, yeah, that's my wife, Janitha, Janitha yes, right. I said it right. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, where did you guys meet and, you know, the history and stuff a little bit. All right. Well, my wife, a lot of people don't know this, but my wife is not from New York. She's actually from Florida. She's from a small town called Boynton Beach, Florida. Mm -hmm. And we met February 25th, the year 2000. Mm -hmm. We met. I was doing a concert with my dad. I was playing the keyboard and she was just in the audience. And she kept looking at me. <laughs> She'll tell the story different, but I don't want to tell it my way. She kept looking at me, and I kept looking at her. And then that's how we met. And we started to date, long-distance relationship. And then after close to two years, we got married. Because I, I still believe, I, I, I don't believe that you should, you know, move in with somebody and y'all ain't married. That's just the old school values of me. That's old school so, holiness. <laughs> so we, 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 she wanted to move to New York, and she gonna move in. And I said, well, we are gonna get married. We got married, and uh, we got married two thousand one, September fifteenth, and it's been a. I'm not gonna say it's been all peaches and cream because we had some ups and downs in our marriage because we were so young. We've been married for eighteen years now, but God has saw us through each and every one of them. We have three wonderful children, and my wife is amazing. And, and you know, I would tell all the fellas out there, get you a wife that can cook. My wife is an awesome cook. She's an awesome mother. She's an awesome wife. And she's also a praise, the praise and worship leader at my church Come as well. On here. And uh, she's a great gospel artist in her own right. I did not even know my wife could sing until after we were married. Wow. Well, luckily in this grand old church, you know, the first ladies, they like to sit and look pretty, but you, but you find at least some that will do this and will do that. But it's good to have her as the praise and worship leader doing something in the kingdom. Right. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, we're four minutes into our first half of this show. So now uh, we are going to move on to another segment producer. Yep, that's him and his beautiful wife. And you know what? I'm going to say this. Uh, go back, producer, to uh, David's um, uh, picture. Yes, that's what that's his, one of his. Now, David, now that I do see one picture um, of you and your youngest son. Go back, producer. Yeah, right there. I see you guys are at a church event. Yeah, and um, you guys got all black on. I think you got some type of uh, goldish, blackish looking jacket. I don't know. I just took one of the pictures from Instagram. But um, I think this is your one. Of, this is your youngest son. That's my, my youngest son. That was at my pastoral anniversary, my tenth anniversary banquet. Okay. Well, the yeah. Youngest... That that's my youngest son, Jai. He's my a drummer, awesome drummer. Wow. Also, basically, I, I got all the all the family working. Uh, wife, praise and worship leader. Son, the drummer. What about your other two oldest? 
my oldest son, he was the drummer, but he is now um, working in Manhattan. He had an awesome job in Manhattan, so he just comes to church as much as he can. And my daughter, she works the media, like the screens and all of that stuff at the church. So awesome. she's in the media department at the church. So thank God we, you know, you got to give kids something to do or you'll lose them. Awesome, brother. Well, here's another question, but producer, as we go back, we're going to go all the way back, producer, uh, to one of David's uh, suit pictures. Because we got this, this, yeah, that right there. Now, Bishop David Wright, now you know we in this Church of God in Christ, we love fashion. You already know, and I already know. But here's a yes, good sir. picture of you uh, all dressed and clean. So my thing is this, what does fashion got to on David Wright. Let's, that's my next question we want to put on uh, the show on tonight. Well, when it comes to fashion, I, you know, I, I, I'm not as, as good as fashion as Miss Malik. Let me get that out there. <laughs> but when it comes to fashion, you have to, you have to, um, as a gospel artist, you always have to be on your A game. Especially in today's society because if you're not the next thing you know people got phones everywhere mm. people are taking pictures everywhere so fashion is very, very important to me and um it got like this with me i, I like jackets I'm, I'm i'm i get a lot of my jackets made and i'm very into jackets fancy jackets because you know it ain't about what you got on but sometimes you know what you got on if, if you look good you feel good that's right. If you feel good, you play good. You know, if, if you if you sing, if you feel good, you sing good. You know, and, and a lot of times people they all oh, come as you are. No, but I believe we ought, when we coming into the house of God, we ought to put on our best. Why? If you're gonna wear your best to the club, then why not wear your best best to the house of God? To the house, the house. And, and, you know, and still on that, well, we're 50 some seconds into our first show, but, but going back to your best best, uh, you won't go to the White House or the courthouse uh, wearing anything. So respect God's house. That's basically what David's message is. Absolutely. Praise be unto God. Well, we're 40 some seconds into our first show, but Pastor David Wright is going to be with us in part two and the final show. We got much more to talk to him about. We're going to talk to him about his, his uh, becoming a pastor. We're going to talk more about, uh, we have some video clips in part two that we're going to show. And also, we are going to talk about uh, Pastor David Wright and the New York Brooklyn Mass uh, Choir and his singles, his CDs. Oh, we, we got more now, but we got more, but only if you come in part two. So join us for part two live with the Malik Show. Yours truly, Malik Shabazz, something along with Pastor David Wright. I'll see you at part two. This is yours truly. <laughs>